The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Well, let us thank God for a beautiful Sunday morning, 16 Sunday after Pentecost. We want to thank God for bringing us back to get us safely to glorify and honor his name and that his presence will remain with us. God is good all the time. time. And all of the time. God, God is good. good. All right, we'll start with our opening hymn. Um, it's the first song, hymn number 493. said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Now with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep for sins by a man and in death. By a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Hallelujah. No glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please join me in the reading of Psalm 146. I will read the non-bolded part if you will 
continue with the whole bit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth. For there is no healthy man. When they breathe their last, they return to earth. And he died they must perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help. Whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them. Who keeps his promise forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed. And food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord knows the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and the widow. The frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf, deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. And the burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A second reading. <clears throat> second reading is from James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. It is not the rich who oppress you. It is not they who drag you into court. It is not they who blasphemy the excellent name that was invoked over you. You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but you do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill. And, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs? What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <laughs> Our gospel lesson is taken from Mark chapter 7, beginning of the 24 voice. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice, but a woman whose daughter had an oppressed spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, 
of Sang Phoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Perim and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, Ephatha, this is be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Right, good morning again. Good morning. I think I'm a little bit a bit of much of myself this morning. Um, time has been doing some healing. And I'm glad to be here once again. And thank you all for the card. I received the card from here that everybody signed. Um, the card of comfort. I love the word it is. And um, I'm ever so grateful. I haven't gotten around to send my thank you notifications or around to Bishop, Pat, BD, every one of them send me a submitted card. And I need to reach out to everybody graciously. I will get to it. I'll get to it. I just got to register for classes three days ago. I missed the first class on Tuesday. <laughs> Everything was just like, well, I'm getting there. And I'm grateful to God for that, for the strength. Anyhow, I just want to draw your attention back to our readings this morning. Our three readings today from Isaiah, James, and Mark all are speaking about faith possibilities, encouragement, comfort, assurance, and acceptance. In the Old Testament lesson this morning, a God of possibility says to the fearful, Fear not, for I am your God and I'm here with you. The son says he's a miracle working God. And then the son says he is the way maker. When all is lost and hopeless, God sets up and assures us. He steps up and assures us. He is the miracle performing God, a God who streams water in the desert. If we see this as a message of comfort and courage, it starts with a direct and powerful message to those who are fearful. He says, be strong. Do not fear. It is a reminder that our strength and our courage come from the assurance of God's presence and his promises. In this reading, God promises divine intervention. It is a promise that God will set things right. He will come to save and deliver his people from their oppressors and enemies. This is a message of hope. In verses 5 and 6, it shows us and paints out a clear picture of the miracles that will take place when God intervenes in our situations. The blind will see it says the deaf will hear, the lame will leap, and the dumb will speak. The dumb will speak. Here is where it becomes metaphoric. When 
on the barren land or desert will bring forth fresh spring of waters. Can you see how a hardened heart will be softened? This should give us hope finally that we will experience a complete transformation no matter the circumstance once God is in it. In the New Testament reading from James 2, we are being cautioned about preferential treatments. Choosing one person over the other or one thing over the other because in our eyes, it does not look good or presentable versus the other way around. Either it is not appealing or as others will put it, it is not easy on the eyes. So we choose when we are placed in that situation. My question to all of us today is, have we ever found ourselves in a similar situation to choose? And what did we think? How did we react? Was our treatment preferential or discrimi discriminatory? If yes, why so? What if that person turns out to be the unexpected? What do we do? When the rejected stone, according to Psalm 118, verse 22 to 23, say it becomes the chief cornerstone, what do we do? How do we handle our disappointment in free Georgia? if we find ourselves in that position. Do we go back, mature up, and apologize? Or do we just go with the flow and pretend that we did not think anything like that was happening in our hearts, in our minds? Trying to hide behind the smiles and euphoria of everything that is going on. But in that, let us not forget or remember that, that God is the one who lifts the lowly. He is the one who gives power to the afflicted, enrich the poor in his faith, so that they can inherit and become heirs of his kingdom, because he loves them. God loves humility. The humble in heart and spirit. He calls to himself. There is no need to be boastful. If when it is not done in the name of our Lord, God of Israel. When we boast, we must boast in the spirit and in the name of the Lord our God. Not in our own confidence. But further in the reading, God cautions us about how we should exercise out our faith when we interact with one another. Because faith without work is dead. So as people of faith, we must show some action. We should lead by example. We should practice what we preach. We should treat others right. We should love our neighbors. We should see everyone as God's handiwork, no matter their origin. We should prove and feed each other. We should lend a hand to the poor and destitute. We should help somebody become better. I mean, I understand when helping somebody and they reject that help is different. But we must start from somewhere. At least give it a try. And not preempt or presume or assume that the person is going to say, ah, I don't want your help. I'm good. We have to give it 
or try. We cannot continue to be strangers when we sit by each other in the same pews or live in the same community. I live in a neighborhood where we only see each other's cars go back and forth. I dare be one of those neighbors. I roll my glass at the corner. And I. Sometimes people don't answer, but I say good morning anyway because that's how I was brought up. Because good morning or hello, how you doing? Sort of break barriers. It, you know, that's the first step to engaging anybody. Hi. Because I still, as Christian, I am, Lord have mercy upon me. I still <laughs> fight with those who don't say good morning and come to ask you a question. You know, at workplace, somebody wouldn't say good morning to you. You ride an elevator with other wouldn't say good morning, okay? Because everybody in their own space, oh, I'm not a morning person. I'm not. Why are you not a morning person? You should be sleeping <laughs> when you're not a morning person. So they don't say, you say good morning, don't answer. But then later on, they're like, do you know where I can find a stapler? I wonder who you're talking to me. <laughs> okay, let it just go in here. Let get get married here in some way. Hopefully you find your stapler. Because <laughs> I didn't take it home. So we have to start from somewhere. We cannot continue to be strangers in the same church. We are brothers and sisters. Because when God created human, he said, this is good. That's in Genesis chapter 1, around the 30, 31 verse. He said, this is good. I know his intent was for us to have our own relationship with each other. To love our neighbors as ourselves. That's a tough one. We never do. I have to share a story with you. I work with this guy in the office, two of us in the office to share space. So he's here when you enter, I'm there. And I call him bro. Just to let him know that's how I feel about him, that he's a brother. So nothing is too good for me to do. I share everything that I have with him that I, he only possibly can share. And I bet if he ever told me one day that, oh my car, through conversation, like, I don't even have money to deal for gas and that I got my gas. If I have $20 or $30 or whatever, I will give it to him. That's how I work. I don't know about other people. I value money such that I know money is the purchasing power. It can do a whole lot of things. It speaks, right? What the voice, the voice can tell, money speaks, right? But well, one of my prayers has always been, Lord, please don't let me see money as that important thing such that it will be too much for me to share with anybody. So, unless I don't have it, but once I have that ability, and I think, Lord, is always going to provide more, but that, that faith of mine is where it is. I'm sticking to that story. So, I always share. But when he buys stuff, I go go and he sees that I'm not having much money yet. Attempt. I don't eat all of the tasty eat a lot of chicken. I don't eat chicken so <laughs> But they just say, hey, you want to try a piece of rice or something? I'm like, why? I take it go. You don't even offer food for me. Like, well, but that's mine. I keep <laughs> smacking, smacking it. That's mine. Da, da, da. Like, whoa. Whoa. And you sit there and you gladly accept everything that I give you. <laughs> but that's how we are as human beings. We each attach different value to something. But what I'm saying is just a caution because I do not expect answers today. It is something that we can ponder. This is the same faith in Mark 7, our gospel lesson this morning, that led the, the, the sorrowful nation woman to a gen, um, to a gentile, a gentile lady, to Jesus. She was a gender, but she believed that with God and true God, all things are possible. 
So with her faith that had been so small, she approached Jesus. Jesus did not want to be seen or heard, so he tried to, you know, keep to himself that evening. He said, well, I'm going to enter into the silent space of this place. I don't want anybody to see me. But somebody spotted him. That's how the spirit works. So Jesus entered the house silently. I'm guessing that he wanted to be alone for some time, away from people, probably to take a rest from working signs and wonders. But my mind is telling me that he was also aware of someone that may have been there. Someone who needed help. So she approached him and begged him to cast out a demon that had been bothering her daughter. As the story unfolds, the daughter was not present. She was home. But because of her faith in knowing what Jesus is capable of doing, Believing that it was probable and possible, she pled, and her daughter received the cleansing and healing that she so much needed. In this same reading, Jesus healed a deaf man. This is faith at work in both episodes. So in our daily lives, whether we are meeting new people, given a piece of tax to do, overseeing orders, or whatever we are called to do, let us remember that God is a God of possibilities. That God is a God of assurance. That God is a God of acceptance. That God is a God of comfort a God of encouragement and a faithful God. He understands and knows us true and true more than we know ourselves. He intervenes in our lives and on behalf of us at the right time. He's always on time. He is never late. Like the woman and the deaf man in the readings, let us remember that he is non-discriminatory God. A non discriminatory God. Doesn't matter where you come from. He is for all people, no matter your own origination. He cares just the same. We are all his children. We see in Isaiah 35, we see encouragement, faith, assurance, possibilities at play. Be strong, do not fear. The eyes of the blind shall be open. It's faith. Ears of the deaf unstopped. Lame shall leap. Faith and assurance. In James 2. What good is, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but you do not have works, then I wonder. Because if we are people of faith, then we must show some work. Work. We have to show the actual part. We can't be too subtle. In Mark 7, the woman pleading with Jesus is all about faith. Comfort. Assurance. She accepted that Jesus would do the work. And Jesus accepted her that she believed that he would do the work. So faith plays out. But she knew her daughter was going to be healed. She, her heart, her mind was at rest. That brought comfort to her. So she put the pain working for her. She got comfort. Knowing that was going to happen. That assurance. And the acceptance, even though she was a Gentile. But she came to him knowing that he could do the work. When Jesus even tested her, he said, let us feed the children first. She said to him, 
you need a cross on the table will be sufficient. How many times have we tested our faith? I don't know about you. I'm still testing mine. I need a straight to be standing here. I never thought I was going to be in school this summer, so to tell you the truth. <laughs> My brain couldn't think. I've been blanked out since May 28th. I've been trying to find myself. I've been trying to collect my pieces here. Try to make sense. God tests us in different ways. But he tested this woman straight. Jesus knew she was there waiting for him. He said, I'm going to see. He knew she was going to find him though. He just did it as a tease. So sometimes when things happen to us, right? Whether it's good, bad, devastating. Sometimes it's just a tease. We have to wait. Call on God and see what he's going to do. So may God help us remember our lessons today as we go into our communities, dealing and interacting with one another. And may his words not fall on deaf ears. Amen. Amen. So together we say the Apostles' Creed. Let us now affirm our, affirm our faith in the word of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate. He crucified and died in his He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For mine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The collect of the day will be said together. Grant to us, Lord, we pray. The spirit of faith and do all with those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be able to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Prayers for the people. Please join me in the reading of prayers for the people. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear when we pray in the name of your Son. Therefore, in confidence and trust, we pray for the church. Father, enlighten the church for its mission. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. We pray for the world. Creator of all, lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace. That we may respect one another in freedom and unity. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. We pray for the community. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others. And all may act with integrity and courage. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and all of us who love us. We pray for those in need. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May they know the power of the Lord. Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in being people. We remember those who have died and those who mourn. We remember with thanksgiving 
those who have died in the faith of Christ, and those whose faith is known to you of old. Father, into your hands we will commend them. Give comfort to those who mourn. Bring, Bring them peace, peace in their time of loss. We praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. May, May their example inspire and encourage us. For all clergy and the people of God, for Alan, Alan and Carol, our great bishops, for John, our rector, for Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, Deacon Susan, Nathan, their bishop, and their circular pastor. For those in authority, for Joe Biden, our president, and for Mark Reed, our governor. <clears throat> for those for our special needs and concerns, we pray for those names listed below. Please keep them in your thoughts during the week. For all those serving in the military, Caleb, Maddie, and Quincy. For the repose of the souls who, of all who sacrificed their lives for their country the victims of natural disasters, and the victims of gun and domestic violence. We pray for ourselves and our ministries. You are invited to add your own petitions out loud or silently. We pray for all countries at war and for an end to the violence and oppression throughout the world. We pray for all people who are facing hunger, poverty, and oppression of any kind. We pray for all who face discrimination and violence because of their race, nationality, sexual orientation, gender, and religious beliefs. Amen. Please join in this prayer offered by the Archbishop of Jerusalem. O oh God of all justice and peace, we cry out to you in the midst of the pain and trauma of the violence and fear which prevails in the Holy Land. Be with those who need you in these days of suffering. We pray, pray for, for people of all faiths, Jews, Muslims, and Christians, and for all the people of the land. For I would pray to you, O Lord, for an to violence and the establishment of peace. We also call for you to bring justice and equity to the peoples. Guide us into your kingdom, where all people are treated with dignity and honor and treat your children. To all of us, you are our friend and father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A prayer for the bishop elect together. Eternal God, our Savior and God, we bless and thank you for your servant, the Reverend Julia Woodward, the bishop elect of your Episcopal Diocese of Massachusetts. By the glory of your Holy Spirit, grant the bishop elect grace and every spiritual good to take up the role of the chief pastor and teacher. May the bishop elect the shepherd after your own heart. Who will walk in your ways and watch over your people with a loving care? Strengthen and guide the bishop elect to lead and vision and courage to teach the truth. For this we ask in Jesus' name and for the sake of his Lord. Amen. Please join me on a prayer, a prayer for our journey. Lord, thank, thank you for helping us to get to where we are today. We pray for continuing guidance as we travel through our journey of faith. Give us eyes to see the possibilities before us, ears to hear you and each other, and voices to effectively and accurately communicate one another. We seek wisdom, Lord, and our decision making, enabling us to get beyond our doubts and uncertainties. Grant us patience and strength on our journey as we seek your perfect will and guidance. We thank you, Lord, for being our guide throughout this journey. And may the knowledge and love of God be the director of our congregational life. Amen. Your word is a lamp for our feet. Help us as we follow the trust of love, the story of your purpose, and we praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Yes. Peace. Peace, John. Peace, Ernie. Hey, John. Peace, John. Sorry. Peace. 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 Peace.
Please be with you. 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 Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and offer it and sacrifice to God. Service. Oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of this glory of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, Almighty and everlasting Father. You have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The general thanksgiving will be said together. Almighty, Almighty God, 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 God,
We are unworthy servants who gave you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercy, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all the days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing truth, the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen.